Hello and welcome to this course introduction on Enterprise COBOL Programming Part 1. COBOL is a language that has been around for decades. Programs tend to be very long-lived. There are millions and if not billions of lines of code of COBOL still in production. COBOL has withstood the challenges of many other languages. Even now the challenge of Java is showing that COBOL works with Java and not instead of Java. COBOL is still very, very fast. In fact, it's a lot faster than Java for most processing. COBOL is easy to read. It's maintainable. It's relatively simple. It's stable. It's been around so long. It's extremely robust. It tends to be portable. It handles high volumes of data. It's not surprising to see a program handling terabytes of data. And COBOL is continuing to evolve, looking forward to handling all of the web data and processing that you see. COBOL and Java work, as I said, very well together. Let's look at what this course is going to cover. In our course description, you will be learning the basics of enterprise COBOL programming. We will be looking at all four COBOL divisions. We will be looking at the basic logic that you need to write a COBOL program, how to divide it up modularly. We will be looking at how to define your variables. That's part of data definition. We will be looking at sequential I.O. processing. I.O. stands for input-output. So we will look at how to read and write from data sets. Data sets are the mainframe word for files where you store your data on your disks. Our objectives. As a result of this training, you will be able to describe and code the layout of a basic COBOL program, the four divisions and contents of all four of those divisions. You will be able to code COBOL programs that have conditional processing and repetitive processing. Conditional processing using the if statement and repetitive processing using the perform until with a number of variations. You will be able to code COBOL programs that read and write sequential files using the read verb and the write verb using the FD in your file section of your workings of your data division. And of course not only will you be able to code your programs and enter them onto a mainframe computer, you will also be able to compile and link them using JCL and then run those programs, again, using a JCL member and the submit command. You will be able to correct your errors and then recompile and link and run them again and, and check for basic processing output. The prerequisites to take this course you should know enough JCL to recognize a DD statement and to understand what a DD statement is used for and to write and code an execute statement and a job statement on your system. I will give you all the basic JCL you need, but I will not really be explaining it, so I'd like you at least to have recognition ability for the clauses that you find in a DD statement. You also need to know TSOISPF. You need to know how to edit. I will be showing you how to create new PDSs using option 3.2, but you will need to know the basics of how to do an edit and save of a member of a PDS. And that's it. I will be teaching you basic logic and I will be teaching you the syntax and how to use the basic COBOL instructions. We have a number of modules in this course. The first module is your first Enterprise COBOL program. We will take a sample program and go through it line by line, and you will understand how to write a basic, really, really simple, but complete COBOL co program. Then in the next module, we will run that program. We will compile it and link it and run it. I'm also going to show you a number of helpful references that are free on the internet from IBM. These are manuals that are the definitive source for the syntax and usage of COBOL verbs. Then we'll look at the identification division in more detail, connect it with load libraries, and we will look at self-documentation, one of the key features that has made COBOL so very, very popular. COBOL can be read 
by almost anyone because the documentation is relatively complete and in English. So hopefully you do speak English. If you wanted to, you could document in any language you want, although COBOL itself does use the English verbs. But you're not restricted to documenting in English. You could document in any language. We will be looking at data division essentials. This is where we define our files and define our structures, define our variables, give, it, give each of our variables types, and if we want initial values, and if we have fancy output layouts for our numbers, these are called numeric edited fields. We will be looking at how to easily put dollar signs and commas and periods and suppressed zeros or asterisks or whatever, plus signs, minus signs, into our displayed output for reports. We'll be looking at COBOL numbers. COBOL supports a variety of, of formats for numbers, from character numbers to packed decimal numbers to fixed point binary numbers to floating point. And we'll be looking in more detail, especially at those packed decimal numbers, and we'll see why they are so very popular. We will be looking at the procedure division. First, we will look at arithmetic statements, and then we will look at the very, very fancy move statement, which is for assignment. And we'll see how powerful it is. It's not just transporting information from one variable to another. It also converts. We will be looking at the PERFORM statement, both for looping and for modularization. PERFORM is an essential statement for COBOL programmers. Then we will look at the big picture, that is, what is structured programming, and why should we use structured programming for COBOL? Well, structured programming and COBOL are very closely wedded, and we will be looking at how you can make your program even more readable than what you've learned at this, up to this point. And lastly, we will actually switch over from our simple accept and display verbs to real powerful COBOL input and output verbs, the read and the write. And we will use that with a sequential file for input and a sequential file for output. If you have any questions about any of the information covered in this presentation, please use the question comment box that you see on your screen. All right, let's get started. The course is ahead of you. Thank you for joining me, and my name is Mary Abdil. I look forward to being your instructor.